Hi there, and welcome to this video about upgrading SharePoint provider hosted applications to Azure Active Directory registered applications. In the SharePoint add-in model, we used to create provider hosted applications, which were applications built with whatever development platform of your choice, and typically it was .NET Framework, and using, in the case of .NET Framework, the client-side object model, or CISOM, as well as the REST APIs for SharePoint Online. Typically, a provider hosted application used to consume data in the SharePoint host site of the SharePoint add-in model they related to, and could eventually consume data in the SharePoint app site, if any, for your SharePoint add-in model solution. In the Azure Active Directory registered applications, on the contrary, you can use whatever technology you like, and typically can be something else and not necessarily .NET Framework. Of course, you can still use .NET if you like. Can be hosted anywhere, and once it has been registered in Azure Active Directory, you can use it to consume any data of any SharePoint Online site collection, as long as you have proper permissions to do that, as well as you can consume any other workload of Microsoft 365, thanks to open authorizations and Azure Active Directory. So, from a transformation process point of view, there is no conversion tool to easily upgrade a provided host application to an Azure Active Directory registered application. But at the same time, it is quite an easy journey. You simply need to register an application in Azure AD and to grant proper permissions to that application, which can eventually be based on the uh, resource-specific consent uh, so that you can target just specific site collections for your application. Then you will need to get an access token from Azure Active Directory in order to securely consume the SharePoint REST APIs or CISOM or Microsoft Graph from within your custom developed solution. And if you are upgrading an already existing .NET solution, which used to be a provider hosted, and you want to make it as an Azure Active Directory registered application, you can simply replace the logic that you use to get a client context of the SharePoint client object model, for example, using the PMP framework authentication manager class, and then all the reminder part of your code can still be the same as before. So let me move to the demo environment and let me show you how to do that in practice. Imagine that you want to create a web application which will behave like a provider hosted application. You want to register it as an Azure Active Directory application and you want to use it to consume content in a SharePoint online site, like for example, this uh, library of documents. So using Visual Studio, you can, for example, create a new ASP.NET Core web application. You will have to provide a name for your application. This one could be absolutely fine. And then you will have to choose a version for the framework. .NET 6 long-term support is a good one. You should select an uh, authentication type and Microsoft Identity Platform will be the right one for this scenario so that you will be able to rely on Azure Active Directory and on the Microsoft Identity Platform for authentication. And then you can click on Create and you will go through the uh, project creation process as you will see, you will have to provide information about the target Azure Active Directory tenant you want to use. Here we are using the .NET Microsoft Identity Tool. We have uh, to specify the credential we want to use to access the target tenant, uh, and we can create a new application, which can be uh, AD Provider Hosted Demo, for example. In my tenant, I will register the application, and I will be able to use uh, this application for authentication while using the web app that I'm creating. So click on finish and you will have an application ready to go with the program.cs file with all of the settings for the dependency injection configuration of the services to have the authentication and the Microsoft Identity Web in place as well as the authorization rules with the default policy and stuff like that. Then you will have in the app settings to configure the coordinates of your application Azure ID, so the domain, the tenant ID, the client ID, and so on and so forth. 
Now, I already have an application that I created for the sake of having a fully working and fully functional demo. And here we are in a web application which I created exactly like the previous one and which I also configured in the uh, building of the services that I want to enable token acquisition to call downstream API and to have in-memory token cache so that I will be able to use uh, access tokens and to retrieve access token uh, in an incremental mode inside the implementation of my application and I will use it to get an access token to consume SharePoint online as like as my application was a, a old school provider hosted app of the SharePoint admin model and then I also have configured in Azure Active Directory in the target tenant an application with this specific client ID and tenant ID which has been configured in the authentication in order to be a web application and right now I'm using the uh, return URL that I have locally on my development environment. This will be replaced then with the actual public URL of your web application when you will publish it. And then in the API permission sections, I have configured that I want to have some permissions for Mexograph and specifically I want to have the all sites.read delegated permission for SharePoint. Plus, I configured a client secret for my application. So now, if I go back to the web application in Visual Studio Code, we can see in the settings that I have all of the information about the application that I just showed you in Azure Active Directory. And clearly here we have the domain, the tenant ID, the client ID, the secret, which I will refresh right after this recording, the callback URL, as well as the URL of the target site that I want to consume from my application. Then I have the page, the actual page with the Razor model where I'm going to show the list of documents that I have in my document library. How can I do that? Well, in the page model behind the scenes of the index.html file, I have first of all to specify that I want to use the authorize for scopes attribute. This is required to have the incremental consent in the UI of my application. Then I have a property, a public property, which is a list of document types, where document is a record uh, with a title and with a link. And then in the onGet of my page model, I simply rely on a function that I defined right here, which will use SharePoint Online via Sysom using the access token, the delegated access token of the currently connected user. So what I'm doing right here is I'm reading from the settings of my application the URL of the target site and this configuration object is retrieved via dependency injection in the constructor of my model. As well as I use also an instance of the I token acquisition type so that in my code I can say okay let's get the URL of the site, let's get the root URL of the SharePoint online target environment, create a request for a scope, for a permission scope for my tenant slash all site dot read, this is the syntax you need to use to build the uh, scope you want to get in the access token. And then using the token acquisition, I can get an access token for my user, specifying the scopes that I'm looking for, so that I want to have all site dot read for my target tenant and for the currently connected user, which will be authenticated by the Microsoft Identity Web infrastructure. Then I need to encrypt, actually to protect with a secure string the access token so that I will be able to use the authentication manager class of PMP framework, which I referenced in my project. And I can create an authentication manager which will rely on that secured access token so that I can then say get context through the authentication manager and get back a client context of Sysom that I can use with regular Sysom code as like as we used to do in the uh, old school SharePoint and Dean model provide the roster applications. I can get a reference to the library of documents and to all the items. I can load them in the context and make the execute query async with a retry using the PMP framework extension method. And once I've done that, I can go through all of the documents that I retrieve and I can show them, or I can add them in the list of documents that I have in my uh, domain model property called documents so that, again, I can render them in an unordered list of HTML. So, let me run the application, let me show you the output. 
here we are in the web browser we will go through go through the authentication process and here we are back to my asp.net core application where i can see the list of documents that i have in my target library here you can find additional content if you want to dig more into the topic covered and like always thank you for watching this video